boys and girls, to another video. Today's episode is on car leather. What are the five biggest myths when it comes to car leather? Myth number one is less of a myth and more about me setting up the stage so that I can address the four other myths. And that is this, very few people seem to know that car leather is coated, literally coated with a synthetic clear coating, much like the clear coating on your paint. It's not identical, but they share a lot of parallels with the two of them. Why is that important? Because that leads me into myth number two, which is most people based largely on the industry itself, advertising and marketing has taught us that leather is this delicate, overly sensitive material that requires special cleaners in order to clean. False. You do not need special leather cleaners in order to clean your car leather. Now I will emphasize car leather because virtually all car leather made in the last 15 plus years is finished with a clear protective coating. While this may be discouraging to some of you, for most of us it represents the good news, especially a detailer, because that means that your car leather is more resistant to wear and tear and cleaning and maintaining it is easier than ever. So you do not need special car leather cleaners. Generally, no pun intended, because what I'm about to say is that generally any general all-purpose cleaner will in fact work to clean effectively and safely your car leather. Now, currently my go-to all-purpose cleaner is Simple Green. It's biodegradable, environmentally friendly, VOC compliant, non-flammable, non-toxic. I mean, somebody stop me. And it's a concentrate. So for example, if you're a driveway detailer or a car owner and you're looking at this a size of a gallon and thinking, oh my gosh, Darren, that would take me like five years to go through. Well, it's an all-purpose cleaner. So there is almost endless uses that you can use this all-purpose cleaner for, which means between your car, the garage, the house, basic cleaning chores, you will find endless uses for this product. So a gallon, it's a concentrate, which means you can custom blend it to suit your needs, will really be ideal for most of you. Certainly as a professional detailer, it's not only effective, but it's more economical, which means that I can actually be more profitable as a detailer, which also means that I can carry less materials around or less specific products around because this is an all-purpose, as in multi-use. So it will clean many types of materials, including your car leather. My go-to rule is for interior cleaning, including your car leather, is I dilute it down 10 to 1. That means one part concentrate, 10 parts water. My rule is that when I'm mixing my formulations, I use distilled water because it's the purest water you can find, which means that the concentrate is not having to compensate for any of the uh, additives or chemicals or what's called total dissolved solids within the water. That's just what I do. So myth number three, you need special tools, brushes, pads in order to clean leather. Because it's so sensitive and fragile, fragile, you need special tools or brushes in order to deal with it. False. You would be surprised once you get down and dirty into it of how durable and resistant your leather actually is. If you have never cleaned your car leather or you've never owned car leather, then this may be a mystery to you and you may have been following the industry and teaching you that it's ultra sensitive, ultra fragile, you need special delicate brushes in order to do it. You've likely seen other videos where some YouTube detailer will pull out a brush like this that's very soft and flowy 
and they will sit there and they will gently scrub scrub I use the word scrub very loosely because it's so sensitive and these bristles are so soft the only real cleaning these bristles are gonna do is cleaning leather that's already clean because it's just gonna be that ineffective because they're that soft so when whenever I see a video of a guy gently massaging cleaner into car leather because he's so afraid to damage the car leather, I say, okay, that's just not reality. You could spend an hour cleaning your seat if you want, but I don't have an hour to clean my seat. And if I did have an hour to clean my seat, I don't want to take an hour to clean my seat. So my go-to tools are these, believe it or not. This is a nylon synthetic. That's kind of redundant, isn't it? We all, I think most of us know that nylon is a synthetic material. This is a nylon brush. Most of you, if you felt this, you would find it disturbing to think that someone's gonna go in and scrub their car leather with a brush like this. As a note, I'm speaking from a lot of experience. I'm talking decades of experience. I know that when leather actually gets dirty, not only will you need a cleaner that's more effective than traditional off-the-shelf dedicated car leather cleaners that have been watered down or dumbed down to the point that they're truly ineffective, but you also need a tool that's actually gonna do something to loosen and break up that dirt because I've seen some horridly dirty car leather. And a brush like this that is gently used to agitate the dirt loose and to break open the pores and release the dirt is just a load of crap. It's just someone that's talking from either inexperience or they're trying to over-dramatize the moment, which is why many of you have come to the conclusions that you have that car leather is so special, unique, and fragile, and we need all these special cleaners and all these special techniques in order to deal with it. And it's simply just not true. Let me pull you in and show you exactly me using these. Now, just for the record, this is what's called a non-abrasive synthetic scrub pad. You can find these on my website. Now, on my website, I actually show or highlight what's called the OXO, O-X-O, it's a very popular brand of household brushes that you can find at a place like Target or Amazon specifically. Point being is it's the winning balance between stiff enough and soft enough, perfectly suited for cleaning your car leather. Just to highlight exactly what I mean when I'm talking about these, what many would call aggressive brushes and scrub pads. Here I have my car leather. It's in my BMW. It's a performance sports car. It's got very nice leather in it. I spray my dilution, my simple green, and here I will proceed to scrub mop up with a microfiber cloth. Leather remains intact, it's not damaged, there's no abrasions, there's no scuffs. It's perfectly fine, and now it's perfectly clean. But wait, there's more. I'm gonna go back in with the scrub brush. Mop up with the microfiber cloth. Once again, perfectly fine. No abrasions, no scuffs, no scrapes, no scratches, and perfectly clean. Now for the record, my go-to is this pad because it conforms perfectly with my hand on all the different nuances and angles and slopes of a seat. The reason I default to a brush is if I happen to be working on a car that has a very, very heavy texture to it. So if it's got a, uh, an overemphasized texture to it, you may need the use of the bristles because those little bristles will get into the 
uh, nooks and valleys of that texture better than perhaps the pad will. But that's where you have to decide it will be a case-by-case -case judgment call. But once again, these are the tools that I use both professionally and personally on my own cars. Myth number four, you can transform marginal leather into superior leather if you just find the right car leather conditioner or that special car leather conditioner and you rub it and massage it and you apply it over and over and over again and it's going to slowly transform your marginal car leather into superior car leather. Leather is so soft and smooth it feels like a baby's bottom. That's just false. Just like everything else in this world, not all car leather is created equal. Generally, as a rule, like everywhere else in life, you get what you pay for. The more you pay for your car, not only the better quality that the um, leather is going to be, but you're going to get more of it. For example, on mid-entry to upper-level entry cars, you're going to get seating that has been labeled as a portioned seating leather or leather seating surfaces or leather apportioned seating. That's just code for we've used some leather in your car, but not in all the areas that you likely think we've used leather in your car. So you may look at your leather seat and think, oh cool, I paid for the upgraded leather enhancement in my car. And you look at your seat and you think, hey, that's a leather seat. When in fact, it's only the surfaces that you actually touch, as in your back and your butt, that is actually leather. The rest of it is vinyl leather looking type material. It's made with the same type of texture to replicate the actual leather itself, but in fact, it's vinyl. So you really have to verify, and it's really tough to verify because the dealer's probably not gonna tell you because the salesperson's probably not gonna know and he's probably not gonna wanna tell you that, guess what, you're paying for the upgraded leather, but not all of it's actually leather. So, point being is, you're not gonna transform leather that's subpar or inferior to superior leather. It's just not gonna happen. So as you spend endless time searching the internet for the best auto leather conditioner, the best car leather conditioner, uh, first off, your car leather has a coating on it. So you're not actually dealing with a natural leather anymore. You're dealing with a synthetic coating. So there's that. And secondly, all the special overpriced leather conditioners that you wanna to apply to it, Yes, it will make your leather feel differently. It will make it look differently, but it's not going to be able to transform it into something that it simply is not. Okay, so myth number five. Wait for it. Now this is a generic, well, it's not a generic, it's just that I'm not showing the label deliberately because it's really irrelevant. I'm not trying to push any single product onto you because it's not going to make or break your world, which leads me to myth number five. And on myth number five, I'm speaking from direct experience. And what I've found is that most people, regardless of whether it's a brand new car or a used car that they've just purchased or a car that they suddenly have become emotionally attached to for whatever reason, they race to condition the leather. They become fixated on conditioning the car leather at the expense of the more important part, which is cleaning. So often, as in most of the time, I see car owners that want to bypass the critical part, the most critical part of cleaning, and jump to finding that special car leather conditioner that's going to protect, preserve, nourish, enhance their leather. The problem is, is they forget to clean it and what they're doing is they're applying layer after layer after layer, month after month, year after year of dressing or leather conditioner over dirt. And over time, this dirt 
combined with the conditioner of their choice builds up and makes a really fat mess. Now, fat may not be the most appropriate adjective to assign in that moment, but it makes a big stinking mess. Okay, it doesn't really smell either. Okay, let's just say it makes a big mess. A big mess that you're gonna have to deal with down the road and it's gonna be difficult to clean off. And it's ironic because literally that car owner is creating a problem down the road that they're trying to avoid in the first place, which is leather that degrades and wears out and breaks and cracks and all those kinds of horrid things. Because that repeated use of leather conditioner, the special leather conditioner, without cleaning it first, creates this buildup. That buildup, when it's combined with the natural oils of your skin and the dirt that's floating around in the air in your car, over time will actually degrade the leather and break it down. So after four, five, six years of that repeated applications of that special car leather conditioner, you find this big grungy buildup and now you clean it, but because over the period of time, that dirt combined with the conditioner has literally worn the finish off of your car leather. So when you now clean it very thoroughly off, you might be severely disappointed to find that in cleaning your car leather, that the dirt pulls away with it the original finish of your car leather because it has worn it away or eaten it away. So it's kind of ironic. So that's my myth number five. So take that understanding, apply it when you watch that next video on cleaning car leather or conditioning car leather or with your own car. Hopefully you learned a little something. You can always find links to my website which goes into more comprehensive detail, no pun intended, once again, below in the show more box. And by all means, subscribe. And if you wanna get alerts, so that you know when I upload a new video, simply hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button and you will be alerted every time I upload a new video. Okay, boys and girls, I hope in fact you have learned something along the way and we'll see you on the next video.